Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for joining today's session. My name is Lara Walter, and within Birk, I'm responsible for the Technical Service Lab of Marine and Protective Coatings. Today, I would like to present an approach how to balance two different properties, functional performance, but also a nice appearance. Since many decades or even centuries, protective coatings have been used to protect metal constructions against corrosion damages. They are designed to provide maximum functional performance and therefore also providing a valuable contribution to a sustainable future by extending the durability of those metal constructions. As the functional performance for those systems is the most important property, other requirements like gloss or like color play a minor role only. But is it possible to achieve both functional performance and a nice appearance? Today, I would like to present an approach how to balance both by the right selection of additives. And to be more detailed, I would like to present a wetting and dispersing additive for water-based colorful protective coatings. Unlike other coating segments, in marine and protective market, solvent bond systems still dominate. However, the water-based binder technology has been developed and it's even accepted by high atmospheric corrosivity classes. For example, since 2017, the coatings for the Chinese freight container market have been changed from solvent bond systems to water-based systems. And this is only one example telling us that water-based protective coating systems already have the same performance level as solvent bond systems. And yes, also in protective coatings, water-based systems and the shift towards water-based systems has already been started. But by using water-based formulations and water-based systems, this also means a challenge, a major challenge, because for formulators, as formulators have to have a very high knowledge in formulating water-based systems. And one of the major challenges when it comes to water-based protective systems, this is hydrophilicity. I just would like to show an example, an application test result coming out of our marine and protective lab. There we checked the influence of different wetting and dispersing additives towards water sensitivity. For example, in this case, we checked the constant humidity test and formulated a water-based anti-corrosion coating without wetting and dispersing additive and with a very universal wetting and dispersing additive which is used for several applications. As you can see, the water sensitivity of this system is much lowered and therefore just showing very worse performance when it comes to corrosion resistance. To get a deeper understanding, we have somehow to have a deeper look at the polymer by itself. So how does a wetting and dispersing additive look like? We have mainly three different parts. The first one is mainly the most important one, because this is a pigment affinity group, which has to absorb on the pigment surface. Secondly, we have the polymer backbone by itself. And the third component, this is now the side chain. For water-based systems, it's a hydrophilic and quite polar side chain in order to get the wetting and dispersing additive water compatible. And this again, or this already, is the problem because this hydrophilic components which are used for the side chains or which have to be used for the side chains, they remain in the cured coating and they lead to a higher water sensitivity of the whole system. So now we have to see what possibilities do we have to avoid this typical structure of wetting and dispersing additives. And there we found let's say three different approaches, what we can do, how we can design polymers in order to make them less hydrophilic. So in the first, you see it's an overall increase of hydrophobicity. How does it work? So we incorporate 
um, resin affinic side chains, which are less polar than a typical wetting and dispersing additive. Secondly, we can use the structural rearrangement. We just call it sometimes the umbrella effect because the architecture undergoes a structural change and adapts its polarity during the drying process, which means somehow that the hydrophilic parts are sterically hindered. Last but not least, we use the smart adaption. And this means that the polar and unpolar comp components are combined, but during the process, the hydrophilic part leaves the film and what stays is just the hydrophobic component of the wetting and disposing additive in the film and therefore leading to less water sensitivity. What does that mean? So I would like to show you our first development, which has been especially developed in the marine and protective um, map to have a good water resistance of anti-corrosion systems. And this is DISPA book 2080. So what you can see here are test results coming from the neutral salt spray test. Firstly, again, we checked the formulation, so it's a white pigmented formulation without wetting and dispersing additive. And then we compared two different standard systems, one book standard and also a competitor one. And what you can see is by increasing the hydrophilic parts by the use of wetting and dispersing additives, you see nearly a whole delamination of the coating. Whereas the control performs quite good, but as you can see, it's not well dispersed and not well stabilized. Whereas if you use now the Dispar Book 2080, you will achieve a very good corrosion resistance, but also a good dispersion performance of the wetting and dispersing additive. So, recent or in the recent times, new technologies have a positive influence also on coating functionalities. That's why I would like to sum up this by book 2080. And you can say that it shows less hydrophilicity compared to typical or usual wetting and spruising additives. Therefore, we can achieve an improved corrosion resistance and also a better water or early water resistance. As well, we saw in some wood formulation also an improved stain resistance. So therefore, it's also recommended for wood application. But this per book 2080 really focused on the functional performance by itself. And also the focus is on inorganic pigments. So it was recommended in a first step or as a first priority for primers and also for direct metal coatings where we want to achieve a very high functional performance. But the question now is, is it possible or how can we combine this colorful appearance of a typical wetting and dispersing additive, but also to achieve a very good functional performance? And that's why we did a huge study. The first priority were on the corrosion resistance, but also on the color development. And you see in this different bubbles, which kind of test methods we use to evaluate which property. So for example, for the color development, we measured the color strength as well as the rub out test. And for the corrosion resistance, we tested the neutral salt spray test, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, as well as condensation humidity tests. And then we wanted to learn even a little bit more. And that's why we also tested how does it influence the viscosity of the slurries? How does it influence the gloss? And is it also possible beside organic pigments to achieve a very good color, brilliant colors? We also were interested in inorganic pigments as well. So in the first step, we screened the viscosity of different slurries. And as you can see here, we tested four different organic pigments. So two blues, one green, and also a red. And the overall viscosity performance shows us that you can achieve different viscosities depending on which wetting and dispersing additive has been used. But as you can see, this by book 2015 is the best overall viscosity reduction compared 
to the other wetting and spruising additive tested in this study. So if we now check the color properties, so meaning especially the color strength, we just put the first competitor one as a standard and therefore we achieved 100% color strength by, use, by the use of this wetting and dispersing editor. You can see that also competitor two works quite well for different kind of pigments, but also this Bible 2015, even for example, for the um, organic blue 15 to one, shows a very nice color strength and is even more than 6% higher compared to the standard. But we have to admit that many wetting and dispersing additives show quite a good color development. So that's why we are coming now to the next test method, and this is mainly focused on corrosion performance. Here we started by the use of the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. For us, it's an advantage, especially in the screening phase. It's a very good test method which complements the results we obtain by neutral salt spray test. So the EIS is the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy and gives us a lot of information about the electrical resistance of the coating and therefore we get an idea of the water uptake and therefore also of the corrosion resistance of the system. What you can see here is again the one without um, pigment concentrate, so we just checked the white of the system and there we can see quite a high impedance value, which means that the corrosion resistance of this coating is quite high. If we now use again typical wetting and dispersing additives with hydrophilic components inside, we will see that the resistance is much lower. So this will end up in an old neutral salt spray test in a very worse anti-corrosion properties. So this public 2015 here again shows a good result because we achieve a higher impedance and therefore a higher corrosion resistance compared to other wetting and dispersing additives. Now we really wanted to see the balance between the functional performance, which is related to the anti-corrosion properties, and on the other hand, the color. So what different color values are obtained? And that's why here in this chart, we showed results of a monastral green, so which means an organic green pigment, and we compared the delamination from the neutral salt spray test, which you can see by the yellow dots, and also the color strength. And what we can see that the internal standard, so a typical wetting and dispersing additive again, achieves a good color value, so okay color strength, but shows a very high delamination, so nearly two centimeters. And we just checked a one layer application direct to metal coating for 240 hours. What you can see for competitor one is that this one really is good for good anti-corrosion resistance, so with less delamination values. Competitor two shows a higher delamination, but also a better color strength. And for this by BIP 2015, we somehow achieved both. So a good color strength, but also good values for the delamination. Maybe to show some pictures, we also check the green in the anti-corrosion test. So on the neutral salt spray test, very typical test method. And here we can see different pictures before scratching and after scratching. And especially after scratching, you can see that the internal standard, so again, the typical wetting and dispersing additive, shows quite a huge delamination. Whereas competitor one shows quite a very small delamination, which also applies for this bit of 2015, and competitor two somehow is between. But we can say that this bit of 2015 in the slurry grind, so here we had a very green organic pigmented slurry, which was checked then in a direct to metal coating system. And there we really see with this bit of 2015, we achieve an excellent corrosion resistance. We also wanted to check now a co-grind, so meaning we did not a slurry grind, but a co-grind with a titanium dioxide and also a carbon black. Here we didn't use 
an acrylate-based direct chromatic coating, but an epoxy-based primer. And what we can see here again after the neutral salt spray test, that a typical wetting and dispersing additive shows a lot of blistering, which is even visible without scratching. But also after scratching, it's quite visible that there is a very high delamination. Whereas competitor one again performs quite good. Competitor two also shows a lot of blistering and delamination. And again, this paper 2015 shows a very nice property in terms of anti-corrosion properties. At the end, we did a summary of all test methods. So as shown in the slide where we check the corrosion resistance, where we, where we check the color development, viscosity reduction, gloss values, as well where we check inorganic performance. And we ended up with, let's say, a score system, which looked like this. So there are two very important aspects in this chart. The first one is, that the best overall score is achieved by this public 2015. And secondly, as you can see, it's best balanced in all the properties. Because for example, if you just compare it with internal standard one, you see that the typical wetting and dispersing additive internal standard one just shows very worse performance in viscosity reduction, for example. Competitor one, on the other hand, on the other side, shows a very good corrosion resistance, but it's not very good in the color properties. For competitor two, it's vice versa. So this one shows quite a good color development, but it's less strong in the performance in terms of anti-corrosion resistance. But this fabric 2015 shows really a good balance of all properties. So we ended up after the study with book, this per book 2015 as the winner. To sum up the properties of this public 2015, we can say that it meets the requirements of the usual wetting and dispersing additives in terms of general properties. So to provide a good appearance. For example, we can achieve a very good color development by the use of this public 2015, a high gloss level, for example, for top coat application, but it's a very, also a very universal wetting and dispersing additive and therefore suitable for organic, but also for inorganic pigments. And as shown in this presentation, you will achieve a very good viscosity reduction for slurries. But it does not only show these general properties as typical wetting and dispersing additives, it also provides a very nice functional performance because it shows less water sensitivity compared to other wetting and dispersing additives. And therefore, we also observed a minor influence on the corrosion resistance of the system. We also tested different test systems, so acrylate-based, direct to metal coatings, but also epoxy-based primers. And therefore, we saw by the use of this 2015, a very broad system compatibility. So in the past, in the recent times, the appearance and the functional performance have been considered as contradictions. But now we found a solution, and this is this book 2015, which shows a very nice balance between functional performance on the one hand side and a very nice appearance on the other hand side. So I would like to thank you for joining the session today and see you next time.